Hey, what's going on everyone? Leo here. And if you're watching this video, you then probably want to know or be wondering or be asking yourself, how does Facebook ads, ads charge you, right? How, or how much does it cost to do Facebook, Facebook ads? And don't worry, you know, alone, there's uh, a lot of people that actually have been asking me that lately. And what I want to do then today is um, I want to go through this article I find it on Ad Espresso with a lot of information from 2017 uh, based on $300 million, I think, uh, of the $300 million that they spend on ad expense. So they definitely had a lot of data uh, back up to this information. So stay tuned. Uh, first of all, before we get started, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Leo and I have a company called Digital Track, right, to help small local businesses here in the Solano County area and throughout the Bay uh, to help them advertise on social media or other platforms like YouTube, Instagram, um, uh, Google AdWords, etc. And maybe you're wondering why, why would I like to advertise? Well, first of all, you either are doing advertising through print media and would like to try to do it online because you have no online presence and you perhaps have, have been seeing your customers, how they interact and and you see them perhaps being on their phone or their, on their phones all the time, and that perhaps had kind of catch has uh, got you thinking, right? How can you reach out to those people that are into the coming into your restaurant or your retail store, or if you are um, any other type of retail location that you see them on their phone all the time, and you're wondering how can you reach them online that way, or perhaps you basically. Um, have been doing online advertising within the uh, Solano County area in the Bay Area and you just want somebody else to take over because either you cannot keep up with all the changes that go on and you're busy in other areas um, and you just basically would like to handle that over to somebody else. So if that's you, let's go ahead and let's talk. Depending where you're watching this, you can definitely click the link below and I'll be more than happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one with you, see how we can help. Uh, anyways, let's continue here. So there's a question we hear all the time, according to the article, right? They see, uh, they see going everywhere. It says, the, the question is obviously how much do Facebook ads cost? Um, by the way, this is a article posted by Ad Espresso, which is a, um, a system that you can use to create ads. Uh, multiple ads at once, and they, they're owned by Hootsuite. Hootsuite, if you're not familiar with them, is a, uh, a company that has a application for social media posting automation, right? It helps you automate some of your posting. So it's, they say over here, we see the question a lot, and one of the only consistent answer is we see it depends on a lot of factors, and obviously it says that, yes, that's true, that qu the answer even though it says it depends on a lot of factors, you know, that unfortunately that's true. There's not a straightforward question, uh, answer to that. Uh, there's a lot of that goes into understanding Facebook ads cost. Everything from your audience to your bidding plan to ranking Facebook gives you a directly effect on, oh, what happened here? Effect on the influence, how much you're going to pay. All right, so keep that in mind. Again, it goes back and saying, you know, they, are, they analyzed, well, almost $300 million on, of ad spend on 2017. And that's where the basis information. Uh, and then they go and say, it might not be able to tell you exactly how much your specific campaign is going to cost you, even with the $300 million they spend. Still, you know, this information is not going to tell you exactly how much it's going to cost you, but it's going to give you a good reference point of the current cost of Facebook advertising today. And again, this goes back to early 2018, perhaps. Apologize, let me just get some water. Let me see. Um, yeah, May 22, 2018, according to where, when the post got posted on, oh, the article got posted over here. All right, so let's see. Uh, keep in mind that what you spend on Facebook ads is up to you and how you set up a budget. Uh, so this, po th this post is all about how to affect the cost of Facebook ads and how to lower the individual rates. Again, keep in mind that you have control on what you spend. And mostly on, on most uh, 
online platforms, you have the, the control on that. So, you know, it's not the, how much do Facebook ads is not really the, the cost. How much do Facebook ads cost? It's not really the good question, right? Because again, number one, it's not really a straight answer. Number two, you, you decide that. You decide how much you want to spend. And obviously, a lot of people get frustrated and they say they, they because they don't understand it, right? I don't, I didn't understand it in the beginning. We get frustrated. We put an ad out there. Uh, and first, perhaps we don't get any clicks or any likes. Uh, second of all, you know, we may get some clicks, but then we don't get any sales or any phone calls or any visits to my store to exchange a coupon, right? So all this stuff that we don't understand, it obviously uh, gets us upset, gets us frustrated and get us to quit from advertising. And that's why perhaps most of the time we say, oh, that doesn't work, I give it a try. But obviously we didn't do a educated, a, an educated try because if this company is spending $300 million, and by the way, they're not the only ones spending this amount of money to advertise on Facebook. Obviously Facebook works. It's just a lot of us don't really understand how that really works, okay? So this 2018 edition of our Facebook ad cost will cover cost per click, cost per like, cost per, okay. Uh, so let's see, how does the bidding process works? It's important to know that Facebook works like an auction. Uh, this is important because it's part of the reason that there's not a set answer to how much does Facebook ads cost, right? If you think about that, you go to an auction of cars or prices and they, they may tell you, okay, this car's price is going to start at, let's say, $1,500. And then, obviously, there's no accurate answer to how much the car actually is going to cost you because they say the starting bid is going to be $1,500, but then guess what? It's going to be a bid war of people, right? Be, people beating a, uh, one person beating another one uh, and so on. And so it may end up selling at $3,500, let's say, for example. So you see how there's no really a, a accurate answer how much you're going to be spending for a specific car or day if you go to a car auction because, you know, the cars, the cars are going to go on. Obviously, you decide how much you are willing to spend because let's say you have a maximum budget of $10,000. So at least you know that, that you are not going to spend more than $10,000 because that how, that's all you have. And the same apply over here. You can maximize how much you can spend on, on Facebook or most advertise, online advertising platform. So what does this mean to you? As an advertiser, advertiser will say how much you're willing to pay for a specific action on an ad like a view, clicks, or conversions. <clears throat> you can actually manually adjust this and the pricing and bidding section like I mentioned before, right? If you don't, Facebook will automatically calculate a bid for you based on your budget and how long you choose to have your ad running. So as I mentioned before, you can either let Facebook um, set the price, how much you, you can let Facebook determine the bid for you, or you can actually determine that. Now, which one is the best to do? Uh, that's up to you. I, I will recommend you to test. Um, the reason why is because you want to let Facebook uh, do their adjustment based on the type of goal that you have for a specific ad, right? So if you want somebody to uh, click your ad, you have to let Facebook uh, go out there and find people that are more willing to click on your ad. And then you can take that data after you have so many clicks and you are able to, if you're happy with that data, right, with the pricing for cost per click, then you can take that information and adjust the manual, the bid manually because you already know what works. So here's the thing. Facebook ads is a popular place and you are not handing over stack of cash and getting an ad. You are entering a bid. All right. Um, plenty of other advertisers are trying to get the same ad space in a user's news feed too. And Facebook, Facebook limits the number of ads its users see, right? There's a limit, limitation of space. There's only so much space within the Facebook news feeds or any other of the placements that you got to keep that in mind. There's so, many, so much competition going on. Um, this is only one reason why knowing how much Facebook ads cost 
is so important because of the crowded spot, right, place. There's a large number of factors that can affect how much your Facebook ads costs, cost, and bids are only one of them. These factors can include the time of the year, the day of the week, and even the specific hour your campaigns are running. There are peak times, and when competition is highest, cost goes up, right? Keep in mind, just like anything else with um, uh, competition, right? Where competition is highest, obviously prices are, are rises. For example, Super Bowl. That's the best example I can provide you. Super Bowl, advertise on, pay on Super Bowl is prime prices, prime time, right? Uh, uh, there's premium pricing involved with advertising on Super Bowl because obviously they know that millions of people are going to turn up to the TV and around the world and watch the Super Bowl. And that's why you can only see the best, the top companies advertising because it costs so much. And then once you see the ad, people actually are looking forward to see uh, those just because of the production that goes into place to actually uh, get people to sit down and be excited about watching them. So, again, with this time of the year, time of the week, even the specific hours, all the peak times, all that takes in consideration where, when, uh, the, with the cost of the Facebook ad. So, I always fluctuates between up and downs, right? Uh, your, bid, your bidding strategy. So how you bid is important as well, right? You can set an average bid or choose to set a bid limit on each individual bid. The placement is another factor, right? Either you choose to place it on different areas, the news feeds, the right column, the Instagram feed, stories, uh, etc. So many placements out there. Uh, relevance, right? Your relevance score, which is calculated partially by engage, engagements and clicks can directly affect how much your Facebook charge you, so charges you. So this is talking about relevance score. It's how much the ad that you're putting out there is relevant to the people that you show in your ad. Uh, so let's say, for example, you put in, you, you, um, uh, what's a good example I can provide you? So let's say you put in an ad in reference to, um, tools on a on a medicine uh, magazine right obviously that perhaps is the wrong audience a much better example could be if you on a health and wellness magazine or a diet magazine probably you would go best with uh, advertising supplements right or a type of healthy lifestyles those type of stuff, right? And vice versa. If you go to like a magazine that talks about power tools and stuff like that, and then you start advertising about uh, a guide to lose 10 pounds or your protein shake, right? Stuff like that. Obviously, that's the relevant score is going to be probably really low. And so because the people that are going to be looking at power tools, are not going to be expecting too much into... Uh, I'm not uh, seeing an ad like there, like that, right? How to eat better or how to eat healthy when they're actually just looking for power tools. So that's the relevant score that he's talking about. Just a quick example. The audience you are targeting. If other advertisements are trying to reach the same audience members, costs go up because their news feed space is not unlimited, right? There's only so much space that Facebook has available for you to advertise on. Now, there's a question over here. Has anything changed recently? Well, there's a lot of things that changes within Facebook by the, I don't know, hour, by the day. <laughs> it's yeah. incredible. And it's unsurprisingly affected how much Facebook ads cost. Okay, so, it, and it's unsurprisingly affected how much. Uh, there are frequently small changes made to the platforms, like different bidding options or new ad formats or placements that can change how things are running. There are also a bigger. There are also bigger changes that have gone down, causing bigger trickle down effects. All right, so changes that happen all the time. So you take you gotta take that in consideration. You gotta keep an eye on that. Again, that's why um, if you are already advertising with the Solano County area or the Bay Area, and you just would like somebody else to take over because you cannot keep up with all these changes, let's go ahead and let's talk. Right. 
uh, digitaltrack.co, that's my website. It's phone number 707-410-0307. It's a cell phone, you can call me or text me. All right, so Facebook ad cost benchmarks on 2017. They're basically gonna go and give you all the information. By the way, you can just go Google something like Adspresso, Facebook, ads cost, and I'm sure you'll be able to Google the article if you're interested. So the benchmark, the results of 2017, cost per click cost, and so they go, they, if you wanna review this in depth, you can go and get cow with all the analysis. It gives you a breakdown of cost per click by country. Um, surprisingly, United States is not actually the highest. Uh, so that's something you should be excited about, right? People in the United States are open to click a lot on advertising. Looks like the expensive one was Czech Republic with uh, almost $2 per click or $2 and a little more and change. Uh, cost per clicks by age range. So as you can see, it's expensive usually uh, the, uh, the elderly population to get it to click on something. Uh, cost, cost per click by placement. Uh, looks like Instagram is usually the 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 highest to pay for somebody to click. Uh, many reasons, right? There's uh, obviously attention, less space, uh, but usually, according to this data, it usually has a higher conversion con conversion rate. So it's for most advertising, it, it works for them to to pay higher, just because he knows that more people, most people on Instagram are more willing to uh, convert into a sale. Uh, cost per clicks by month in 2017, obviously December, where everybody wants to advertise so they, uh, are, you know, holidays, Christmas, and New Year, and all those specials going on, that's why prices go up so high. Um, summertime looks like it's the lowest, uh, and by this September, fall is uh, even lowest. Cost per clicks by day. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue with this. You can definitely come by and and check it out, right? Check out all this analysis if you're into that. Um, cost per click for like campaigns, page likes. I wanna get to the bottom here of some more information. And this is a lot of data they give you over here. So definitely a great resource. <clears throat> Let me get some water real quick before I continue to scroll down at the same time and see. Okay, let's review a little bit of the summary. So Instagram ads are expensive overall, I was, as we talked mentioned earlier, but good choices for mobile app installs. So if you have a company that's doing mobile applications, uh, maybe you wanna consider this, right? According to this data, the cost per clicks and cost per acquisition on Instagram for most objectives are higher uh, on most campaigns on average. All right, let's continue. The impressions over so have surpassed reach as the prices Prices objective. In 2016, which was the most expensive objective to target when looking at cost per click. But in 2017, impressions easily place it, replace it. Impressions cost more in almost every single quarter. All right, so impressions looks like uh, have gone up, right? How many, how much you're gonna pay for a specific number amount of people to watch it or how much you're gonna pay per 1,000 impressions, right? So that seems to be going up. It consistently costs more to target women. So women are very responsive to get targeted, probably because a lot of advertisers target women. Not sure. Uh, it costs more to target Apple product except the iPhone for mobile app installs. Okay, so keep that in mind. Cost per clicks and cost per acquisition increased dramatically in quarter, in quarter, in fourth quarter. Obviously, it's no surprises. It's no surprising, right, with the holidays and everybody else trying to sell. It costs more, on average, to target older users for likes and mobile app install, just because that's not the right demographic. I'm assuming. Let's see what it says here. This is different than our findings from 2016. Oh, interesting. And shows a changing trend. It costs more, on average, to target users over the age of 40 for likes, clicks, and app installs. Not sure why. Probably they're more, uh, they've seen it too many times already, more wisdom or, or less willing to learn something. I don't know. Uh, link clicks, 
link clicks was the cheapest objective to choose. So keep that in mind. Maybe that's uh, one you want to choose, right? Uh, as an objective to people to get to click. At least if you do any uh, initial testing, the cost per clicks for the link clicks objective clocked in the lowest cost per clicks for all objectives throughout the all of the 2017. Then it goes to 2016 data. Let's continue going da down further because uh, I saw uh, rest of the information was really helpful as well. So let's see. Let's not go through the summary. So what factors influence the cost of Facebook ads? As we mentioned above, a lot of factors directly or indirectly affect the cost of Facebook ads, how much your ads will co actually cost and how much you'll get for what you pay will depend on a mix of different elements. Here are some of the biggest factors that directly influence the cost of your ads. So let's break down the factors. The audience you are targeting, right? Very important. It is very important to choose the audience uh, because it will directly affect how much you are paying for Facebook ads. So it's important to test different audiences and see which ones are the winner ones. It's important to constantly test uh, because you don't know. I mean, you can go and ask if you have a large audience already and see what what they like and, and, and survey them and survey, right? And that it will tell you a lot of information. But if you don't know, um, keep that in mind. There's a lot of testing that goes on to see what audience are going to be the best. Uh, that will resonate with what you're selling or what you're trying to sell them. Uh, so this is, this in part will largely be affected by who else is targeting the audience you're, the audience you're targeting. All right, so keep that in mind. We discussed above that Facebook ads works on a bidding system. Bidding system. It's important to know that a common misconception of people advertising is that they only uh, think that you in competition with your industry. So if you are a dentist, you think that only the only you're gonna be competing with dentists about uh, teeth implants or teeth cleaning or whatever, right? Like they typically are in sales. So if, for example, if uh, this is an example it gives over here, another example just to uh, see if it helps you understand. And this one it says, so for example, let's say we sell yoga equipment. I might think that I only have to worry about other brands that sell yoga or fitness products, right? That makes sense, right? Common sense. But it isn't true according to what you're saying over here. You are in a direct competition with every other advertiser or marketer who wants access to that particular customer. That particular customers that I, as a yoga mat salesperson, as an example, I am targeting is not going to have yoga as their only interest, right? That customer also may love fishing, scuba, scuba diving, uh, skiing, fine dining, and has recently opened a small business. So you see how many other things they are they love to do or could be interested in getting. Uh, so you're in competition with all those other stuff. Think, put yourself as a customer. Think of all your, the needs you have. Uh, all the uh, the things that uh, attract you, the things that interest you, right? Same thing. All these advertisers are uh, uh, fighting for 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 that for your business. So there are also a dog owner and have a penchant for signing up to subscription boxes. These are each traits that have that multiple brands will be targeting uniquely. And we are all pitted against each other to place an ad on this one very valuable, very diverse customer. Now it says, see where the chaos happens, right? You got all this other interest in battling for this one customer. Fortunately, by increasing other factors and creating a high quality ad, you'll be able to stand out amongst your competition. When you're trying to bid for an ad, Audience is an important part of the cause, but it's not the only factor that matters. Thanks to a high quality ad, for example, you could pay significantly less than your competition is paying to advertise the same exact customer. And then there's a picture there here about the audience definition. This is what you're going to see um, once you decide, once you are able to set up uh, the different audience right based on the location 
the gender, the age, the interest, and it tells you potential reach. Obviously, you want to break this down. Uh, to a certain extent, the audience you're targeting is this something you can necessarily control. While yes, you absolutely choose the audience if you perfect, if you perfect audience is just more expensive, that's just the way it goes. You don't want to sacrifice the audience for the cost. So you gotta understand that if you're selling to an audience that is very expensive to reach, you better be selling a product that costs, you know, that obviously is gonna give you a, a return on your investment. So that, that product obviously uh, has to return you a lot of money for people that buy it. So you gotta make you gotta make sense of that. The amount you're paying for your audience, which won't be obvious for or stated anywhere will vary even amongst your own campaigns as your exact audience for different types of ads is likely to change. All right, the quality of your ad is another important factor, okay? The quality of your ad can set the cost of your ad skyrocketing or lower it, lower it dramatically, right? So it all depends how you actually build your ad as well. The copy that you put in there is very important because the copy talks about, the copy I'm talking about the text, right? The text in the area, what you see in a video, depending on what type of advertising, because obviously that's gonna create emotions, create a connection between your uh, ideal client, their needs, their pains, and how you can solve them with your product services and offers. Uh, if there wasn't enough emotion to create a great ad so that users converse, we now have another incentive, it directly it, it directly and obviously affects the cost of our ads. So uh, there are two metrics you want to look at when evaluating the quality of your ad, which are relevant scores and the click-through rate. You'll get a relevant score for each ad you run, which will be a number of between one and 10, and it's sure you guess it, how relevant your ad is to the audience you are targeting. And we talked about that one a little earlier, right? How relevant is the ad you put in front of the people and how the people is going to take it. Uh, is the ad something that they are open to see or not, right? So if you, if they're not open to see that they have no complete, they not have no complete interest in it because you are, are basically not doing a right job from the start to make sure that your ad is shown to more likely the people that are willing to, uh, are looking for this type of the type of stuff that you're offering, then obviously that's gonna increase your score, your your cost. Um, so keep in mind the high relevance score won't automatically mean high conversions. So don't be stressing out yourself if the score is high or low, right? Obviously don't keep it too low because then it's just gonna drive the traffic the cost too high. Uh, but yet. Does, it doesn't if it's very if it's very high relevant score it doesn't mean that it's gonna be it's gonna create uh, translate into a lot of conversion people doing uh, buying from you um, so don't don't get stuck on this uh, score either right you copy my still need tweaking but the ad itself will be considered a little relevant and that will mean a lower cost the, your relevant scores will likely continually change as more users interact with your ad. Okay, and this is important because, again, uh, it's important to test your audience, right? But the audience cannot be so broad. Uh, and why is saying over here that your cost, that your uh, the score may change, is because. Um, when Facebook goes out according to a specific goal that you set, and uh, it has a pool of people that Facebook thinks they are more willing to uh, uh, do whatever it is that you set as a goal. And what happens is, right, that pool eventually runs over, runs out, depending how big or how small you made it. Obviously, there are things that you gotta go through in reference to identify a good pool. And there's so many pools you gotta test separately because if you mix it, you're not gonna know what pool works, okay? And, excuse me, uh, if if you do a little, really little, little tiny pool, Facebook doesn't have enough information to know, okay, which of those people are more likely to buy from you. Uh, so, 
then obviously that will change the in the relevance score because eventually it runs out. And if you got a um, any pool that you create, eventually run run out of people or for you to to go find that are that will be that will that will be relevant to your product. So that's why you gotta constantly continue to change uh, the type of interest of audience that you're gonna be advertising to. The higher your relevance score is the less you'll pay on ads. Again, it's not something that you get should get stuck on achieving then, oh, I gotta get a 10 because otherwise that's gonna create me the best opportunity. No, it, I, I already mentioned over here that having a 10 or an A is not gonna translate exactly necessarily into sales for you, but it helps to keep your costs lower, okay? Uh, Similarly, here Facebook directly confirmed this in an experiment we did. We also confirmed this through an experiment. Okay, so they also did an experiment. They ran the same ad twice, once with a strong targeting, meaning they had a high relevance score of eight, and once with the poor targeting, with this relevance score of two point nine. The ad with the relevance score of eight got four times more clicks on the same budget, but with uh, where we emphasize cost per clicks. Okay, so obviously this is related to cost per clicks. It's not really related to uh, how much they actually win from it or how much money they actually made from it. It's just basically saying, okay, which one uh, costs lowest, right? Or experiment with relevant scores show how much high relevant scores can affect the cost of your ad. Uh, your click-through rate is the number of clicks on your ad divided by the number of impressions. So that's another factor, right? The, the amount of people that clicks on your ad divided by the number of impressions, that's what generates the click-through rate. A higher click-through rate will indicate a higher relevance uh, and thus more value to your audience. So that's one way how to calculate the relevance, right? If a lot of people is clicking on your ad, uh, a higher number of people seeing your ad is clicking on it, then obviously that creates a high relevance score. Facebook will see this and lower your overall cost, though if you optimize it for cost per clicks, the more clicks you get, the more your spend in that sense. Still aiming for higher click-through rate can help the cost of your ad and its performance. So another factor we talked before is the time of the year, right? Uh, we already mentioned this uh, there are peak times in the year when advertisers are, you know, just fighting for everybody on Facebook ads to get there, to get to the customers even more than normal. Uh, during these peak times, there will be more competition for ads and you'll pay more as a result. So time of the year is another factor. Another factor over here, the importance of cost per acquisition and your return on investment. While looking at the ad cost and ad spend, it's important what even more what okay so it says over here where you know looking at the ad cost and how much you spend on the ad is important but what is even more important is the cost per acquisition right how much you're gonna pay how much it costs you to acquire a client right that's something that you gotta keep in mind because you have to have those key performance indicators meaning you have to know how much you can afford to be able to pay into an advertising to be able to acquire a client because a set of rules that are here from you know people that are doing a lot of uh, billionaires right like uh, uh, what's his name uh, anyways uh, what I think I was listening to in reference to how the, the billionaires right in consideration when they go into consider an investment or a new company that they get into is they give themselves at least 20% error margin right so that helps into uh, uh, get into a new venture a new company a new investment without worrying because they understand that that's not gonna hurt them if they get into that business uh, they understand that they have a higher a higher chance to succeed because they take into consideration that uh, only there's only 20% chance for them to fail. Obviously, that can full trade, but uh, this is something that you gotta keep in mind, right? How much money you are willing to invest to acquire a client, 
and the return that you get in investment, the money that you get back. Okay, this is how you can determine whether what you're paying and what your ad is costing you is worth it. Does your return on investment have a higher value than your cost per acquisition, right? Let's say you pay um, $100 to acquire a customer, but you only get to pay $50. You're going to be running out of business pretty soon. Your business is going to go bankruptcy pretty soon. Now, on the other hand, you, you pay $100 to acquire a client, and in return, you get a $1,000 payment, meaning your return on investment was $900. That's pretty good. That's a very simple example, obviously, right? In a real life situation, you gotta pay some other, so many other stuff. But just to make it simple, uh, analysis. That's in essence what uh, you gotta take into consideration in reference to the cost per acquisition and your return on investment. Uh, or, yep. Let's look at another example. Let's say you're paying one dollar per mobile app installations. The customer will pay you one ninety nine to actually install the app. You're, uh, also, you're also able to determine that one out of three users that came from your Facebook ad will make an additional app purchase of $3. All right, so $1 for you to get a person to, $1 is gonna cost you on, on ads, let's say, if you get a person, to, a person to install your app. Uh, you know that the person has to pay $1.99 in order to install it. So you're earning 99 cents there. And then you also know that one out of three users that came from Facebook ad will make an additional $3, will give you an additional $3. So we already have 99 cents plus $3. That means you are already earning $3.99 uh, on one out of three users, okay? So I don't know, you do the math, the math of that puts you maybe at 150, I, I don't know. Uh, Somewhere around there, let's say let's say you get 100 downloads. So just to break it down here even better, right? Let's say you get 100 dollars. You spend 100 dollars because each the each app install was one dollar. So that gonna put you at 199, right? Because every time somebody makes a download, and install it, they gotta pay 199. So that puts you at 199 dollars from those downloads. And, and an additional ninety dollars from later in app purchase, right? Because one, remember the, what you say over here: the one out of three will uh, do an additional purchase of three dollars. So you spend a hundred dollars, but you made you made two hundred and ninety dollars. Okay, so that's a example again, another simple example of uh, what the cost per acquisition was and what your return on the investment was. Again, there's so many other factors that they, they can go into, but this is just to put it into perspective to make it sim to simplify it. It says over here, your landing page and offer play a huge factor in actually getting those conversions. And this is how they affect the cost of your ads. So the conversion rate, cost per action, and return on investment rates are the most important things to keep an eye on Make sure that you add cost is in awaiting the ROI. And now the next thing over here, the next question, how do bidding options affect cost? So bidding options allow you to choose how you want to pay for Facebook ads. You can pay depending on how, how many people click on your ad, or you can pay for the number of people who see your ad. All right, let me take some water over here. To cover again real quick what they're saying over here so it says bidding options allows you to choose how you want to pay for facebook you can pay depending on how many people clicks on your ad cost per click meaning you want to pay when somebody clicks on it or you want to pay on the number of people who see your ad right that's something you got to decide so here are the different types of bidding options or ways you can pay for your ad this includes again like we say cost per click or cpc you, meaning you are paying only for each user that clicks on your ad. And a lot of times, this is the more traditional advertising that we see with um, before social media, right? Like Google AdWords. When, when you, you go on Google and you search for something, let's say you, your, tooth is, your, your teeth is hurting and you, you need a dentist right away, and you go and search for dentists in San Francisco because you live in San Francisco, obviously that's a, a, a new... Uh, 
seen an ad, let's say dentist in San Francisco, California. Okay, you want something uh, quick, right? You're not gonna go into reviewing a lot of this. So you start clicking some of this and let's say you click on one of this, right? In this situation, the most traditional Google Hours situation, the most traditional advertising, that's basically a cost per click. When somebody clicks on your ad, that's when you're gonna get charged. So that's what it's saying over here. When somebody clicks on your ad on Facebook, that's one way that they will charge you. Uh, they do not have to complete the conversion and purchase on your site or sign up on your landing page. They just have to click on it and you will get charged. That being said, you are in paying for users who view your ad and didn't convert. Okay. So impressions, cost per 1,000 impressions. That's another way of that Facebook will charge you. You're paying for cost per 1,000 impressions. The cost per impressions is much lower than a cost per click. So you gotta take, take that into consideration. You rather, you know, pay a little higher for everybody clicking on it according to all this, the testing they did, or you rather have Facebook go out and search, seek out for, put your ad in, in front of 1,000 people and see who bites, essentially, right? but it says over here that it costs a lot less than cost per click. And when you want to get a lot of eyes on your ad, this can be a good way to go. So you gotta decide on your strategy. What, that's why it's, it's so important that, that you test. You test as much as you can, right? Uh, cost per acquisition conversion CPA. You're optimizing for a specific action to be taken. Either be um, a lead, Either be somebody adding a product to your shopping cart, either be somebody calling you, placing an order, either be somebody visiting your store. So there's so many uh, acquisitions that can be considered, right? Uh, however, you pay per impression. So even though you, you Facebook can calculate for you how much you pay for for per acquisition, they can give you those statistics. Still, you'll be paying per impression. You're gonna be paying per. Uh, the number, uh, you're gonna be paying more per 1,000 impressions. Each click to the website may cost more than when you are optimizing for link clicks, but on average, each click when optimizing for conversion is more likely to lead to a, that conversion that you want it to be. So, yeah, let's say you do the link click uh, strategy or goal, uh, it may cost you less, right? Because obviously Facebook will find a lot, of a lot of people that clicks that likes to click a lot on, on, on ads way faster than it, it, it's much harder for Facebook to go and find people that actually are going to take the action that you wanted to take, right? Cost per acquisition. Either be that, either be becoming a lead of yours, either be downloading a quick a guide, either be signing up for your offer, etc. So that obviously is much harder to find for Facebook uh, and that's why they usually hire. But again, a lead could be way more valuable because obviously you are leading with, you are gonna be dealing with uh, leads that are more willing to buy from you as opposed to just click for links because your grandma or so many other people that just like to click on stuff. So Facebook also defers optimization, uh, offers diff different optimization options, each of which will optimize the ad delivery to users likely to take the requested action. This includes, sorry, I'm just getting some water. This includes the uh, conversions setup. <clears throat> That's an optimization, right? Facebook will deliver your ad to people who are most likely to complete the designated action you've chosen, such as purchase from your site, becoming a lead, etc. They evaluate this based on past user history and you're paying per impressions, again, per 1,000 impressions. Another optimization is impressions, right? Uh, Facebook will deliver your ad to as many people as possible, getting as many views on your ad that they can you're paying for per impressions as well, per 1,000 impressions. Clicks on your ad to your site. So Facebook will deliver your ad to the people who are most likely to click to your site. 
you're paying for cost per click or CPC. Daily unique reach. Facebook focuses on delivering your ads to people up to once a day affecting frequently. Uh, you're paying per impression in this, in this instance. So these are some of the optimization options. Um, there may be other ones that may be coming up, right? You can see here, Facebook will automatically choose a bidding options based on your objective. If your objective is to send clicks to your website, Facebook will set a, the bidding strategy to optimize your ad to accomplish that objective. You can manually change it. So it, this, this is something that could be up to this point. I don't know. Uh, it, it can change at any point, all right? So this is just basically up to uh, mid-2018, and I don't even know if this is uh, uh, up-to-date. Uh, I think it is. There's an image here basically on the type of optimizations you can do, right? Conversions, landing pages, views, link clicks. Uh, these options will be visible to you, again, depending on the goal that you chose for your campaign. Similarly, Facebook will automatically have the bid set to get you the most conversions click impressions for the best average price. This means they will bid. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> they will bid for you based for you based on how much your budget is and how long the ad will run. And if some of the best Ad placements cost a little more, they'll go ahead and buy them for you and lower the, your average later. If you have a set number that you want to stay at, however, for each individual bid, you can choose lower lowest cost instead of target cost and set a big cap. Uh, so if you can see over here, the lowest cost, this is one of the type of bid strategy. I don't think this is it. This is here no more. Uh, but however, you still have the option to, if you want to pay lowest per cost on something, either be a click or either be la view landing page or conversion, you can cl uh, click a box that you're going to see there, you set a bid cap, and you can specify the amount, the amount they're willing to pay for a specific action, right? Links to your websites or uh, uh, impressions, etc., video views. Right, you can set that up. However, in the beginning, if you don't have enough data, uh, you're gonna be tying Facebook ads. They're gonna you're gonna be tying their hands together without being able to do much if you set that very low. Right, if you set that very high, you just basically uh, gonna be giving Facebook all the the money. I don't know how optimized I could get, so it. You can you may want to start with automatically let Facebook determine that so that you get enough data and then you can come back and set a big cap once you have that information. Bidding options heavily affect your Facebook ads cost because you are choosing what you want to pay for. A cost per conversion may be more expensive than the cost per impression. But if you want to send users to your site and only a few of your impressions actually click it makes more sense to choose a cost per click style of bidding. So again, the bidding options heavily affects your Facebook ad cost, right? Because you are choosing what you want to pay for. A cost per conversion may be more expensive than a cost per impressions, right? Because face impressions is very easy for Facebook to do. Just basically impressions is put in front of 1,000 people as fast as possible for the lowest cost, cost while it's much more harder for Facebook to go out and put it in front of a, thousand, a lot of people and find the ones that are going to actually convert according to your goals. You also have to consider what's more expensive per click, impressions, etc. And what's more expensive to run as a campaign. You want to dig deeper? There's a guide. Then it says here, it gives us we're going to go into six tips to reduce Facebook ads cost. So this is going to help you. For those of you that have stayed up to this moment, this long, uh, congratulations. Definitely, uh, it tells me right here that you do want to continue, that you're interested in learning, and I appreciate that. Your time is, is one of the things I can really uh, not put price on, right? So if you're still here, 
Uh, let's go ahead and continue with this bonus over here. Six tips to reduce Facebook ads costs. Uh, first tip number one is obviously split test everything. We already mentioned that a lot in the past. Uh, it can help you determine what's working on your ad and what is not working. It can increase your return on investment, your conversion rates, and yes, it can help you reduce your Facebook ad costs depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Plenty of advertisers, advertisers make the mistake of crafting the absolute perfect Facebook ad and leaving it at that. They, If they were to split tests, they'd be surprised to see that in many cases, the perfect ad A is for some reason not performing as well as another similar ad they're split testing B. Sometimes we won't know exactly what will work best until we test out a few different ideas. So testing, testing, testing. Number two, Tip to lower your costs on Facebook advertising is keep an eye on frequency. A high frequency of your Facebook ads can be silent, silent but deadly. So tells you it gives, Facebook it will give you a a stats on the reporting that is called frequency, and the higher the number, it means that the same person is seeing your ad that many number of times. So let's say you have a frequency of eight. That means that a lot of the people that are you are targeting, uh, on average, they're already seen the ad eight times. And obviously, what's going to happen is just going to the same people that keep seeing it over and over and over uh, is either going to ignore it completely or report you, right? Uh, reporting you is really, really bad. Ignoring you is bad as well because Facebook will start seeing that your, your audience is basically numb to the ad and they don't really care for it no more, right? They're going to still show it, right? Because they want to get paid. However, uh, you're going to be paying the consequences. Uh, it says over here, frequency is the metric that tells you how often the same users has seen your ad. If the same people keep seeing your ad over and over, it means two things. You are not reaching a new audience. The audience you are reaching keeps seeing the ad but might not be converting. Okay, a little bit that what we mentioned before. Uh, well, sometimes a user will see an ad once or twice before they click and convert. Plato finally got me with the third campaign. In a general, in general, if they are interested, they'll click the first time. The higher your frequency gets, the less interaction, click-through rate, and conversions you'll see on your ads. This will start to increase the cost of your ads, and you won't be getting any results. Ideally, keep your frequency under three. Well, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of different stuff that people tell says when advertising, right? They, some say keep it between three to five because again, you want to uh, put your ad in front of the uh, your audience as uh, as much as possible because it studies says that we so bombarded with with stuff all the time that obviously those that wins are the ones that can stay in front of you the longest. That's some of the things that I heard. And this one is saying ideally keep your frequency under three. I don't know. Again, test your own, right? Test your test your own uh, uh, ads and see what works for you. If it start getting higher, it's time to stop the campaign and either adjust it or terminate it. But that's it. This is why it's important that you, as an advertiser, have so many other ads lined up for testing, because. It's like you having a product that is working great and all of a sudden you cannot sell that product anymore. What's going to happen to your business? It goes out of business, right? Because it's not going to give you perhaps more likely if you were not ready at all, it's probably going to get not going to give you a lot of time to come up with a new product that people are going to, to love. So more likely you want to have other products lined up that are already making you money as well. So in case your best product fails, you still have other three that may, you know, get you close to where your main product was getting you to. Uh, so ideally keep your, okay, by making sure users are only seeing the same ad a few times, you'll keep engagement and interactions with your ads higher in number. Keep your ads new and fresh. So partly in an attempt to combat frequency, and definitely just because you should, you always want to make sure that you are cons 
constantly updating your ads. Like I said before, right? If you have multiple products lined up to test, uh, more likely your chances at, are to continue to provide a new, fresh look on your business so that your audience doesn't get bored and start getting tired of seeing your advertisements, your advertisements everywhere. If you run even the most successful campaign for six months straight, it'll run out of steam eventually. This happens with everything. Just think about many things that you go through in your life that uh, it, you get excited in the beginning about something, but then eventually you get bored of it. I mean, the best thing I can, the best uh, examples I can give you is in the music industry, right? There's so many songs that comes in, you get all hyped up. Oh, that's my jam. Yeah, I like that, right? And eventually what happens, you get, you know, they play, it plays out, it plays over and over again, and eventually you just tire, right? You see, you come something in the radio again next time, and you'll be like, oh, again, this song, right? I'm tired of it. It's, it's playing over and over again uh, all the time, right? So the same happens here, right? You gotta, you want to keep it fresh. You, you want to keep your ads fresh. While you can recycle parts of an ad, you want to keep your ads new and fresh, once one campaign ends, create a new one. I don't know why it's saying over here, once one campaign ends, create a new one. No, I think the best thing to do is you want to have a new one ready before your campaign ends. As a matter of fact, you want to have four ready, new ones ready before your campaign ends. Add new images to the same offer. Switch up the way you phrase, you phrase the offer, but target the same audience. Sure, it would be nice if, if we could run the same ad over and over again, right? Because less work for us. But again, uh, it's all about competition. I'm sure your competitor is coming with the next big, big, big thing that if you fall asleep, yeah, right, they're going to pass you. So the same happen, happens with advertising. It would definitely be nice to uh, be running the same ad over and over again. Less worries, less worries but let's face it, right? Eventually that dies down. When it comes to Facebook ads, in every ad, I think, where I heard so, so far, you want it to be like a gay co guy co commercial. There seems to be a new one on uh, one. There seems to be a new one on with a new character or gimmick or joke every time you turn on the TV. So split testing can help with this by creating different images and text and offers. You can combine them and create a large variety of different ads quickly and efficiently. So number four, tip number four of uh, lowering the cost of your ads is choose your audience for each specific campaign. You should be choosing, oh no, what happened? Ah, uh, great. You should be choosing an audience specifically for each campaign you run, okay? Or create a campaign specifically for that audience. You do not need to include your entire target. Uh, come on again. You do need. You do not need to include your entire target audience in every campaign. By doing so, you can drive up your cost a lot. Instead, focus on sections and subsections within your audience, and sending them highly targeted messages will be more effective. All right, just to put it in other words, you obviously want to be uh, offering the menu, the lunch menu, if you are in lunch hours, if you are in a restaurant situation. Then you want to be offering the dinner menu if you are in dinner time hours. You want to be offering the breakfast menu if you are offering the breakfast, right? Uh, another example, let's say you're in an HVAC service business. You want to be offering AC repair during the summer, right? It makes no sense to be offering heater repair when you know the demand is AC for those it's for the summertime. And vice versa, right? In the winter, you obviously want to be concentrating on offering or getting clients that are looking to repair or replace their, their, their heater because that's what they need at uh, that time of the year, right? So... Different audiences will cost less than others. We discussed this above. Sometimes an audience will cost less, not because of who you're targeting, but who, what your relationship with them is. Uh, remarketing to an audience who is familiar with you 
whether you are using a custom audience from your email mailing list or a custom audience from your website, it's likely to get you more clicks, specifically when combined with the highly targeted messages, messaging designed specifically for them. The more clicks, the more conversion. The more interaction you get, the less you'll pay and the more return on investment or ROI you'll be likely to see. Still thinking, still thinking, buy on eBay. This looks like an eBay ad. Your marketing often boasts both higher conversion rates because you are appealing to a warmer audience. So this still, this is an example of remarketing. Remarketing, if you don't know what it is, is basically be able to continue to advertise to those that show some, that show some type of interest on your uh, previous ad, right? Either because they visited your website, but they didn't check out or buy the product. Uh, or let's say you put something in a checkout section, but you didn't buy it because something happens and then you start seeing that, that product everywhere online. That's basically remarketing. Uh, choosing your audience is so important and sectioning off different niches within your target audience will ultimately lower your cost and increase your success. Why, for example, would you want to run a campaign designed to help who contact or connect with new users and want to include the people already following you within that audience? Uh, let's say it's here. Why, for example, would you want to run a campaign designed to help you connect with new users and want to include the people already following you within that audience? To prevent this, all you have to do is include users who are already connected to you on Facebook pages page. With one tweak, you're already in front of much more relevant audience. You can even use a localized creative of your current high value customers to increase the likelihood of, of profitability. Now, this what this uh, this is and somewhat correct, right? But what it's not really telling you, I mean, it doesn't tell you uh, some other stuff that you got to keep in mind. So it says over here. It makes sense to run to people that like your page, right? Because you would think that people that like your page on Facebook, obviously, it's people that are interested in what you say, what you do, what you offer, what you sell. Uh, but in re most of the cases, that's not true, right? We can go out and and do dumb things where we were first building a page, just like uh, invite people to like it without really uh, inviting the right people. Uh, you can go out and buy one of those offers and say, hey, 1,000 click for $1 and then, or, right, and, and, or 1,000 like for $1 and they people in a totally different country. So you got to keep those things in mind. And the localized audience, another thing you want to keep that in mind is if you don't have a big audience, doing a lookalike is not really going to help you either because Facebook doesn't have enough data or won't have enough data to know what a lookalike audience will be. So in order for you to use a lookalike audience, you should consider to do it once you have big data. It works even best if you're choosing lookalike audience of people that actually bought from you. All right, so let's see, let's continue. There are a ton of different audience targeting options on Facebook. And you can use them in any combination in, uh, that you see fit. By uh, tip number five, focus on one precise objective. So focus on one precise objective. Uh, that's basically, uh, let's continue reading over here. Facebook makes advertisers here pick an objective as the very first step when creating Facebook. Uh, so when you face when you create your Facebook ad, so that when you create your ad, the very first thing you ad, you got to do is pick an objective. Okay, that's the very first step. So focus on one price precise objective. That's why it's important. Still, I see a lot of campaign runs on Facebook ads, according to whoever wrote the article. That's what it's saying, right? That don't seem to have much of a focus. Trying to get users to like the page, leave their lead information, purchase and also check out their mobile app all at once. Wow. Even if this seems like a slight exaggeration, I actually, wow, they say they actually see this as a combination on an actual ad once. It felt chaotic, disorganized, and like it was just a plain too much work. 
uh, I say, and, and like it was just playing too much work, right? Uh, trying to get more bang for your buck by throwing every single objective into one ad isn't, it just isn't going to work. And I don't think you can choose more than one objective anymore. Instead of create multiple different campaigns and ads within those ad sets and campaigns that each has a specific focus, by focusing on one specific objective within each individual ad, you'll be able to make your call to action clear, as well as to get that ad to the right audience who will convert on it. You will, for example, focus on one set of ads on lead generation. You would focus the next set of ads on social engagement. The third set will focus on remarketing products to your custom audience to drive purchases. Another set of ads will focus on connecting with new users, which you will accomplish by targeting users who you are, are not yet connected to. Each of these has a unique focus and a unique audience. The copy image and offers should all be created and targeted for that goal. All right, so very important that you understand the, the focus of your objective. What is it that you want to accomplish with your advertiser? Advertising. Advertise with your ad, okay? Because obviously, if you are clear on this, then uh, it's just going to be a, a something that you'll be able to visualize what you're going to go after. Okay, if you uh, put too many objectives, you don't really have a clear vision what you're going after. Just like a lion is clear on the the their food they're gonna have, their their the gazelle they're gonna go and hunt, right? Uh, they gotta focus visions on a specific one, even though there there are many. They go after the one that they decide to target. Same thing you gotta be you gotta do with your ad. You gotta stay focused on what you wanna do and work on that. All right. Tip number six, choose the right image. The picture you choose for your ad is going to be what jumps out at user and ultimately will decide whether or not they even bother to read the text, let alone click or convert. The picture is one of the most important part of your ad and choosing the right image will help you lower the cost of your ads by increasing click-through rates and your relevant score. Plenty of businesses are using carousel ads, giving them the chance to feature more images in a standout format as a result of both having more images and standing out of. In the Facebook news feed, carousel ads are known for having higher conversion rates, which raises your relevant score and lowers the cost per ad. All right, so that's something that perhaps is good to choose. Within an ad set, having you can run the same ad with multiple images, right? So choose the right image. It's something that we will learn with testing because you, I mean, a, a lot of it, you gotta use common sense too, right? So uh, make sure you understand what is it that you're gonna be talking about on the ad so that you know you have an idea what images will go with that. Then out of so many thousands of images, you at least can come up with at least four images that are kind of related to what you're saying on the ad. And that's something you can do a test. But if you go and test things that are not relevant at all what you're saying, but just because they capture people's attention, um, that probably is just gonna turn off people, either they're gonna, or they're gonna get people mad, right? Or you're just gonna be attracting the wrong people and all of those options are bad. So choose the right image. Uh, let's see. Uh, so final thoughts. There are plenty of factors that can affect how much you'll be paying for your Facebook ads, including your audience, relevant scores, and bidding strategy. So, okay, I hope this information was helpful to you. Uh, I know this was a very, very long video. Well, I was expecting to be very long, but I hope you really have a full, deep guide of everything that goes on, right, within um, uh, how much 
understanding how much you uh, ad, uh, Facebook ads are going to cost you. And again, if you need to go into more depth or read, you want to read the full article yourself, just Google something like adespresso.com or just Google something like adespresso uh, Facebook ads cost or how much do Facebook ads cost, something like that on Google and you'll be able to see plenty of articles that could give you some idea of what we covered today or similar stuff or, or different perspective, right? The more you research, the, the better the different angles angles you'll be able to observe and they make your own assessment. Uh, if this video was useful, useful to you, I would like to ask you to please either, you know, subscribe if you want to continue watching more videos like this or tell me in the comments, how, what can I improve, right? Uh, uh, just let me know or if you have questions, let me know in the comment section as well. If you know somebody that may find this useful, go ahead and please share it. If you are a business owner that would like to know more about me or get in the call with me or just down for a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, let's go ahead and just go visit my website, right, digitaltrack.co. Uh, in there, you'll find my information, my phone number, uh, my email. Uh, you will also see uh, a form that you can complete in case you would like to schedule a no-obligation analysis of your business if you're looking for help on advert uh, online advertising for your business. My number again is 707-410-0307. My email is info at digitaltrack.co. Again, my name is Leo with Digital Track, and I appreciate your time for watching this video. Have a good one. Bye.